in and around Rochester, New York. And they didn't always wear this uniform. As you can tell, I'm, I'm in good company. It's a uniform that was borrowed from the uh, French that had fought earlier. And the Americans, of course, all read of the exploits of the Zouaves. And this is a typical Zouave uniform that's been very Americanized. Uh, the Zouaves were Algerians and Moroccans that usually led the French charges in their earlier wars. And so they were considered to be elite forces. Sometimes if a unit had distinguished itself in battle or its commander felt that their drill was excellent enough to qualify them as Zouaves, they would either task the town, the city, or the commander himself would order the uniforms for the regiment to distinguish them in battle as elite forces. This unif unit did not start the war as an elite force. Uh, they would have been wearing regular army uniforms up until the winter camp of 1863-1864. Colonel Patrick O'Rourke distinguished himself in battle at the Battle of Gettysburg by plugging a gap in the line at, in the nick of time. And they earned their right to wear the Zouave uniform. So as they were in that winter camp, they were issued these uniforms and wore them for the last year of the war. What I'm wearing is, uh, is a typical Zouave jacket. Unlike most, they had a false vest sewn in to give the impression of wearing a gentleman's vest under the, the short jacket. Um, blue pants, the uh, bright yellow leggings are called jam ears, but it was a very Americanized copy of what the French actually wore in their own wars. Thank you. The next two fellows are also wearing a Zouave uniform from the 5th New York. Uh, a little thing from about the 5th New York of the second battle of Bull Run, they were all but wiped out. They got caught in a bad spot. But I'll have these two gentlemen step forward and give you an idea of their paraphernalia. Well, my compatriot here, he represents the 5th New York. They all recruited out of the New York City area in early 61. Uh, like, like our friend from the 140th, our uniforms are also based off the traditional French uniform of light infantry. But as we all know about Elmer Ellsworth, he came through with George B. McClellan, rewrote the handbook for the Ar Army of the Potomac, and uh, incorporated the uniform into the regular army. Uh, unlike 140th, we started out as Zouaves and finished as Zouaves. If any of the enlistments weren't done at the time, uh, a lot of the remaining members went over to the 146th New York. And at the time of the enlistment of the 5th New York, there were so many volunteers that they ended up making a second battalion. I represent the 165th New York, thus with a number two in Duryea Zouaves, with a blue tassel. That distinguished us from the 5th New York. Now the 5th New York ended up with the 5th Corps of the Army of the Potomac, and as Doug Oak said, they pretty much uh, were decimated in the Second Battle of Bull Run. It's the highest uh, infantry casualty of the war, over 82%, 85% casualties out of 500 men. Uh, the 165th ended up in the 19th Corps Army of the Shenandoah. They got sent to Louisiana just prior to uh, Antietam. They suffered from the malaria and mosquitoes and of course battle casualties as well. Uh, they were decimated at Port Hudson. Now as the Army of the Shenandoah moved up through the valley into Virginia after the campaigning down deep south was done, they eventually ended up at Cedar Creek where some of our local regiments from around here ended up. At that point, the 165th was so decimated in troops, they ended up as just being uh, watching the wagons and such. And after that, they ceased to exist also. But uh, our trappings are the same as any of the other regular soldiers that you see. And uh, as far as the only difference in us is that uh, we were strictly by the book. We had to do a manual bayonet and such, which we'll show later on. And uh, pretty much we're a basic infantry soldier with a French infantry guard. That's about it. Thank you. Thank you.